The Michael Popak with the legal AF hot take. Donald Trump better watch out. Judge Chutkin, in her strongest messaging yet, concerning Jan 6th, just said in a courtroom when sentencing Scott Miller, a violent member of the Proud Boys who attacked the Capitol and Capitol Police, that Jan 6th and the threat to democracy can happen again. And she's worried about that, and that's on her mind. Donald Trump better wake up because his trial in the D.C. election interference case being presided over by somebody, Judge Chutkin, who has a vast and deep experience in the Jan 6 defendants, their cases, their trials, their sentencing. She knows every scrap of the footage uh, the, of what happened down there. She's seen all of the social media posts. She, she's seen all of the social media videos. There's no better person, in my view, to preside over the case of Donald Trump than Tanya Chutkin. And we can gain a lot of understanding about what goes on in her brain as she is a fair and impartial jurist, but has, of course, the experience now of having uh, sentenced somebody like Scott Miller to her harshest sentence so far, 66 months, for his being, a, uh, at the time, a Nazi sympathizer, somebody that hated Jews and other minorities who wrote about trying to protect white supremacy in this country that led him on this violent ideology and at the Western Terrace, uh, battling it out medieval style with Capitol and Metro Police and injuring at least five of them. Let me just, before I get back to Chutkin and then tie it to the Donald Trump trial, because this is now the second instance that we've had in the last two weeks where Judge Chutkin has been heard from in Jan 6 related matters, um, the Department of Justice in their news release uh, puts it this way about um, Scott Miller, age 37, from Millersville, Maryland, how appropriate. 66 months in prison, 36 months of supervised release in 2000 and restitution. He had already pled guilty on January the 5th, 2024, so close. According to the documents and uh, 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 him being indicted, the indictment itself, he left his home on Jan 6th, a member of the Proud Boys, um, he ended up at the Lower West Terrace Tunnel, the site of some of the most violent assaults on law enforcement, enforcement officers that occurred on Jan 6. He wore an orange ski goggles, black hooded sweatshirt under a tan coat, a tan backpack, black and red neck gaiter, dark colored pants, and black motorcycle gloves. At the entrance, he joined the crowd of rioters who were attacking the Metro Police and the Capitol Police. Court documents say that at approximately 4.27 p.m., Miller struck a Capitol Police officer, Metro Police officer, multiple times with a long wooden pole. After that assault, he threw at least five objects at the police in the tunnel, including a metal pipe or pole, a bottle, a short wooden stick, a large black speaker, and an article of clothing. But he wasn't done. Let me take time out for a minute. For people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump, to say that these were, and even uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., to say that these are patriots, political prisoners. Listen to the violence and mayhem that they they used against law enforcement as they tried to assassinate elected officials. Uh, five minutes later, Miller then struck multiple police officers who were defending the tunnel several times by swinging and jabbing a long blue and white pole at their heads. So first he had a wooden pole, now he's got a blue and white metal pole, and then he grabbed a hold of a police shield being held by two officers. He pulled the shield out of their hands and after a brief, brief struggle, ripped the shield away from the officers. He then carried the shield back into the crowd behind him and handed it to another rioter. Uh, and so when it came time for Judge Chutkin, who now had before her somebody who claimed to be rehabilitated, after I just gave you that description, he claims that through his ex-wife, um, there's some sort of psychotherapist that has given up his violent ideology. He has a a, a, a pregnant a second wife, 20 weeks pregnant. 20 of his relatives came to court and, you know, had, stood before them. And the judge said, look, I believe in redemption, but I also believe in punishment fitting the crime. And this can happen again, and I've got to send the appropriate signal uh, related to that. So this is the 
statements that we know were made by by Judge Chutkin, you know, in that courtroom, um, which I think is a good, um, gives us a good understanding of the judge is going to be presiding over the case for Donald Trump. In, uh, she said the evidence of Miller's violent ideology, his embrace of Nazism, his support that all Washington, D.C. residents should be executed, uh, should had troubled her, despite his insistence that he had disavowed any of his uh, prior uh, positions. She went on to say that um, in her belief that the Jan 6 mob attack was close to as serious a crisis as this nation has ever faced. Right? This is the judge. This that it, it's as uh, close to as serious a crisis as this nation has ever faced, and that it could happen again. Um, she says uh, the officers who protected the Capitol faced horrendous circumstances. They were assaulted, spat on, beaten, kicked, gassed. They are patriots, and that it can happen again. The judge said extremism is alive and well in this country. Threats of violence continue unabated. She didn't say by whom, but we can put two and two together. Um, when Miller got up there, as they often do after they're caught, convicted, and now being tried, there was a lot of like blubbering and crying, and I want to do well for my family, and I've got a new child on the way. And um, Chutkin, you know, Echo, she's uh, she's got a uh, heart. Uh, there's mercy in the court. She said, uh, she echoed the sentiment about about after imposing her sentence. She said it would be a hardship on her wife and future child, one people who did not ask for this. She she said that having a child is a life-changing event. Uh, and they don't really care about what you did. They just love you. She went on to say that she hopes that he continues his turning away from the path of violent ideology and every person is capable of redemption. That's the judge going to be presiding over the case of Donald Trump. Now, let me give you how that gets back to her. It's the four counts, currently four counts, two for obstruction of an official proceeding against Donald Trump, two for conspiracy to commit election fraud, two counts for uh, uh, related to the uh, uh, 1512 obstruction of an official proceeding is currently being litigated and we'll get a ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court about whether that count is going to be appropriate against the Jan 6 defendants and whether there's a way to save it against Donald Trump. In any event, there'll be more motion practice and appeals related to those two counts on Donald Trump's indictment. The other two counts and the rest of it, Donald Trump, of course, has an immunity motion to dismiss that was rejected by the Court of Appeals by a three-judge panel and is now being heard at the United States Supreme Court on full briefing on the 25th of April. We expect a ruling in late May or early June before the Supreme Court goes on holiday. Um, despite what's going on in America, they go on holiday and their term is October till June. Uh, so once they decide, let's say they decide end of May, beginning of June, uh, let's say it's against Donald Trump and the immunity, uh, they find no immunity for that a former president has for indictments related to official conduct, or they find his conduct is outside of official conduct while he was in office, at least the indicted conduct. Then Judge Chutkin, the same person I've just given you an, out, an outline about and about her thinking, is going to call a hearing involving his Donald Trump's D.C. election interference criminal defense lawyers led by John Lauro, maybe Todd Blanche, maybe Chris Keiss, and the special counsel's office with Jack Smith on the other side for the purpose of resetting the trial. She's already said that she's going to add 90 days to give Donald Trump more prep time depending upon when uh, she gets the mandate to reset the case for trial. By that time, the New York criminal uh, political election interference case that starts on uh, starts this coming week will be concluded. That's going to take about six, seven, eight weeks. Let's call it eight weeks at the outset. So that really is going to end by, by June. By the time Judge Chutkin gets the lawyers back in her courtroom, it may not be until, let's say, July or late June. And then she'll be able to set that trial for 90 days after that. We're getting dangerously close to November 5th. Not to say the judge would um, care about that. Um, I, you know, I think she starts that trial, whether it's August, September, or October. I think she starts the trial. 
Uh, I don't think she delays it waiting to see what happens on November 5th. And by that time, Donald Trump will either be a convicted felon in New York, or he won't be. He'll be exonerated. We'll have to see. But we'll follow it all on my discussion on Legal AF, our podcast at the intersection of law and politics that we bring to you every Wednesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Want to find out why we call it Legal AF? Join us. You'll find out. We curate the best five developments or so at the intersection of law and politics, and we bring it to you right here, sort of like this. These are my hot takes. If you like what I'm doing, I'm Michael Popak. Give me a thumbs up, leave a, leave a comment, and send signals to the algorithmic gods that you like what we're doing. Go over to my playlist on the Midas Touch Network. Look for Popak playlist contributors, and you'll find, I don't know, 1,200 of my uh, my body of work there. And then we got a new Patreon. If you want to get down to the building blocks, the molecular level, really for non-lawyers, but lawyers alike, uh, of uh, the legal principles, state and federal, criminal and and uh, and uh, civil arbitration and otherwise everything that you've heard about on Legal AF you want to learn more about those things we got a patreon.com slash Legal AF new Patreon for the cup of I don't know a cup of coffee in Manhattan every month <laughs> Ben Micellis and I will come to you with uh, tutorials instructional videos uh, teachable moments TED Talks meets law school whatever you want to call it and that's on patreon.com so until my next Legal AF my next hot take to my next Patreon exclusive content. This is Michael Popo. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. 